Sonic Mania has been out on console for the last two weeks, however, it finally came to PC. It ended up getting delayed on PC for whatever reason, and a lot of people were skeptical what it had to do with DRM. Obviously, we'll end up talking about that. Michael here with a PC launch overview for Sonic Mania. Now, there are a few problems with this port that I do want to specifically mention because there are ways that you can end up fixing them, and I've been messing around with the game for the last few hours to try and fix everything that I've been having problems with, and it's been somewhat frustrating, especially since the game itself actually runs perfectly fine. One thing you'll notice is this cutscene, for example, is very, very artifact. You won't see it on YouTube, but when you actually blow it up to a 1440 monitor, the game runs at a very low resolution and upreses it, and that video specifically is very compressed, which is a little bit unfortunate. But let's go ahead and go and skip that because it's not really that big of a deal because you're literally only going to see it at the start. And so there you go. It's not a big deal, but at the same time, it was a bit of a disappointment to kind of see it. And it's all muddy and the kind of like missing color. And I was like, oh, well, that's lame. It looked better on YouTube. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at the options menu. Now, the first thing, if you plan to play this with a controller, you may actually notice when you're in the menus, if you have an Xbox One controller and the API is screwing up on you, I'll talk about it in a minute. Basically, you'll notice if you hold down the button, it'll automatically just go through the menus nonstop, constantly and kind of screwing around. And it seems like everything is imprecise and unpredictable. It's because this game uses the Steam API to use its controller. So you want to go to options and open your controls. Now, currently, I have this launched through big picture mode, and yet the game says the Steam controller overlay is unavailable. Please make sure you are in big picture mode. I launched the game in big picture mode, and it still doesn't think I'm in big picture mode. So you have to launch the game in big picture mode to get the UI to actually change the controls because it uses the Steam API, which basically, if this ends up happening, what you can do is you can actually hit the guide button on the Xbox One controller, bring it up, or what you can do is you can open up the Steam overlay through the Shift tab, I believe, and basically it'll open up the control panel settings thing, and then it'll open up the controller, and then you can rebind the controller to whatever you want with that API. However, that also comes with a bunch of issues I'll end up talking about a little bit later. But if you are having problems with your controller seeming weird, like when I went into gameplay, I tried to move right and it would constantly just make my character judder and constantly try to walk backwards. And so the game was literally unplayable. I tried to jump and it did like a little tiny mini jump. And so basically what it was doing was it was constantly putting in inputs every single like millisecond and every single frame instead of rather being like, oh, you're holding down the button. So that was a very, very frustrating. Also, with this API, I can't get multiple controllers work, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's go into the video settings. So here we get our screen filters, which they have the none, which is the best one. No one likes screen filters. And then you get clean, which kind of blurs your pixels, which is good on things like TVs because they have rectangle pixels. And so that could end up helping, at least on the ones that do have rectangular pixels. So this might actually make it look a little bit better because it won't look so distorted sometimes. And then you get CRTs, which the CRT ones actually look fairly decent. Like it makes it look like a CRT, but at the same time, CRTs were ugly, so there you go. But if you want ultimate nostalgia, sit back from your screen, turn on CRT. It it doesn't look good, but there you go. It's there for people that want it. Then you get window size, which doesn't affect full screen whatsoever, so there you go. Then you also get Windows border. This is the thing that Windows puts around it. This isn't working on my machine, which it might be a problem with Windows 10, or it's something specific with my machine and my kind of setup. I do have multiple monitors. I do have some custom driver stuff set up, and so it could just be my machine, but this doesn't seem to work for me, but it seems to be working for other people, so there you go. Basically, this just removes the border that has like the exit button and the full screen thing up in the top right. And then you also get full screen options, which is awesome. This seems to work perfectly fine for me. It does support other resolutions that are not 19 by 20 or 9, uh, 1920, 16 by 9. There you go. And basically what it does is it adds black bars. And so basically it's not actually supporting those resolutions or at least not on my machine. And so basically it just adds black bars and that's kind of unfortunate. And then you also get V-Sync and triple buffering, which I had to turn on V-Sync and I turn on triple buffering because it's better for input latency. But V-Sync had to be on because even in the menus, I was getting massive tearing. Like even in the video that was playing at the very beginning, I was getting tearing when V-Sync was off. So basically I had to turn that on. I don't know why that is. And I don't know if that'll be the case for everyone. I think that's probably going to be driver related. Anyways, let's go ahead and go back because those are the graphic settings. It is stuck at 16 by nine, by the way, and it does seem to be capped at 60 FPS. So there you go. And then you also get sound. Now you get your music and sound effects. It would be nice to have a mute button on here instead of having to slide it all the way down, which maybe there is, but apparently there's not. But there you go. And it does save when you actually hit B as well. Now, one other thing I didn't mention about the video options is basically when I hit Y to apply, because of my controller problems, it actually wouldn't apply. And after I had turned on a controller, my keyboard bindings for the menus was no longer working. And so I actually had to Alt F for the game to actually exit it. So that is another thing. If you are going to play with a controller, make sure it is on before you start the game or else you'll run into those problems as well. 
And there's also another problem that I'll end up talking about a little bit later as well. And then you also get your, oops, that's not what I wanted to go to, languages, which there's not too many here, but there's enough there that basically the game doesn't really have a lot of text. The menus are really it. And so basically, there you go. You can end up having it in Japanese if you wanted to, because Sonic is Japanese. And there you go. So let's go ahead and go into Mania Mode. And now let's talk about the more kind of outrageous stuff. Now you'll see that I am actually on stage two on here. Now I wasn't stage one, but I tried recording this and kind of screwed it up. So we're just going to ignore the fact that that happened. I have gotten farther than this. I've actually beaten the stage. However, I was talking about the Steam API kind of screwing up. And I think this is a problem with the Steam API, not so much the game itself. So basically, I actually was at this menu and I was like, all right, I need to go get a drink of water and end up doing some dishes and stuff like that. And I was away long enough that my controller, which is wireless, ended up turning itself off. When I came back and turned it back on, it had completely changed my bindings. So I hit A to confirm and play the game and it opened the delete menu. Would you like to delete? And I hit B to cancel because I'm like, no, what did I do? What? And basically it confirmed and it deleted my save. So that's a thing that can happen. So basically, yeah, basically the game can actually completely change your thing. So if you are playing through the Steam API controls, and hopefully you don't have to, then be do, do be aware of that. And make sure that if you ever are in this menu and it says delete, make sure that you actually push over to no before ever trying to do any sort of buttons. And so there you go. Just a warning to you, I'm just going to go ahead and go no save and just start a new game because we can go ahead and play. Now, the other problem is the DRM I did mention at the beginning. The game has de novo put into it, which a lot of people love to hate, and this means that it is going to be always online DRM. Not necessarily always online, you can play it offline. If you restart Steam into offline mode, you can play the game perfectly fine and it has no problems. It's when you're in online mode, the game will randomly register whether you are online or not. And if you are having to having some connecting issues or Steam is having some issues and stuff like that, I had a problem to where I'll talk about in a minute to where Steam randomly made my game close because it didn't think I was logged in, which is extremely frustrating. But basically, yeah, randomly, you'll just randomly get disconnected from the game. Now, this isn't actually supposed to happen. We have confirmation from the developer that they're working to fix it. And so basically the game's like, oh, we're not supposed to you know, close the game when you're offline. That's not how it's supposed to work. And so the online component isn't supposed to be on in de novo that's implemented into the game. And so basically that's not actually something that's going to exist for long term. However, at the moment, it is a massive problem. Now, there are ways to get around it. People have already found a hex edit to where you can just go in and change it. But if you don't want to mess with hex edit and you have very shady internet, do kind of be aware that that might actually be a problem. Now you can fix it, like I said, just by going into Steam, going into offline mode and restarting Steam, and then just starting the game. However, that is a big pain in the rear to end up doing every time you want to play a game. So basically, it's not really a solution, it's just kind of a workaround at the moment. Now there's also a few other problems with the Denovo as well. So where basically the game uses the Steam API to actually tell whether you purchase the game or not. This means that if you are in the game and Steam for whatever reason thinks you're logged out, it will randomly close your game and it will close it without telling you whatsoever. And so basically your game will just randomly shut down and you will have no idea why. And I figured this out because I was messing with the controller UI to where basically I was trying to get the API to change any controls and it kept saying randomly like, oh, you cannot change your settings when you're a guest, which is once again, a problem with the API, not necessarily the game. And basically every time that happened, the game would close. And so basically the DRM uses that API, which is unguaranteed to be working, which means that you could be, you know, perfectly legitimate offline and the Steam API will just randomly log you out and then boom. And this could be an online thing. Maybe it's my online connection kind of jittering out a little bit and then Steam isn't registering it properly. And that's perfectly possible as well. And basically it's just gonna end up being a problem. I was on the second stage, for example, I was at the very, very end basically. And basically the game's like, oh, you are, you know, I got smashed by a rock and I thought it was just a game bug to where it just ended up crashing, but no, it just kind of disconnected me and it was because of the DRM, which is very, very frustrating. And DRM is never good when it actually kind of hurts the actual legitimate users, because I did buy this game. I pre-ordered it actually, which isn't smart. I don't recommend pre-ordering things, but I knew I was going to buy it anyways, because it's a Sonic game. So of course I'm going to, because I'm an idiot, but there you go. So I ended up getting, ended up pre-ordering it and ended up kind of downloading right away. And those were the problems that I ended up having right away. Now, some other people are reporting other types of problems, other types of crashes and other types of controllers not working. A lot of people are having the Xbox 360 controller having problems. But once again, I think that's mostly to the API. But what about the game itself when you're actually playing it? The game itself actually runs extremely smooth. In fact, the game is very, very lightweight. It's using 2% of my CPU right now, which I'm using a i7, um, 6700K, and so basically it's a really powerful CPU, but it is not going to take your system any sort of resources to run the game at all. And so basically, 
And I'm, I'm pretty sure that 2% is actually running for, through de novo trying to actually use the verification and get my, you know, verification of whether I actually own the game or not. And so basically, yeah, the game is super lightweight. It runs super, super smoothly. I haven't noticed any sort of hitching. The game does tear if you have V-Sync on a lot off, and this might actually be because of my drivers and not actually a problem with the game itself. And so basically that's not going to be an issue for most people. And you can just turn V-Sync on. I'm not noticing any sort of input lag or anything like that. It is a platformer, so it's not going to be 100% noticeable either. And it seems to run perfectly fine. Another problem I have had, however, is the fact of multiple controllers. Now, I haven't actually had somebody sitting down with me yet to actually play multiplayer. However, my sisters are going to be totally over for this because they love Sonic. And so basically this is going to be a hell of a time to play with them. But at the same time, I can't get multiple controllers to be working at the, se at the same time right now. Now, I have two Xbox One controllers, and I think this is a problem with the Steam API. And I don't think it's a problem with the game itself. Or maybe it's a problem with the implementation of the API on this specific game, which is perfectly possible. And basically, what ha ends up happening is if I plug in a second controller, it will say that that is controller 2, but it will replace my controller 1 inputs, which means that the first controller literally does nothing while the second controller does everything that the first controller would do and then basically the second player has to be controlled by the keyboard which is fairly frustrating especially when you actually look at it and be like all right this is a platformer that we both want to use the controller for now i think this is just a problem with the api and i think it'll end up being fixed within the first week of this game being out because they are working on fixing up a lot of the problems that people are having especially when the de novo thing being registering people like oh you're offline so you don't own the game har 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 yeah no it's not supposed to have always online DRM. So don't worry, this type of stuff is probably gonna be fixed pretty dang soon. And it doesn't seem like a lot of stuff is gonna be complicated. And once you get the game working, it runs perfectly smooth. It's actually working incredibly smooth. It looks incredibly crisp and incredibly beautiful. And I'm loving it so far. Now, obviously I'll have a full review of it, but as a quick note from what I've played through for the first three stages, which is act one and two of the first three stages, it's fairly good. Like they basically combined in the act one, the first two of the original stages, and then they end up going into basically their own sort of interpretation. They do add in some new mechanics that I think they add in too many at once. They have like three new mechanics on this chemical plant zone part two, and I felt like that was a little bit too much. There's also some hitbox issues to where enemies will be spawning bullets inside themselves. And so if you roll into them, it'll actually hurt you without them ever firing a bullet, which is once again, also fairly frustrating at times. So basically that's one thing that's kind of annoying, but overall it's a solid freaking platform and it's running incredibly smoothly. It is incredibly beautiful. And so I'm enjoying the hell out of it, but Obviously, that's going to be perspective. I think it's an excellent platformer so far. I will have a full review in the next few days. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I missed that jump, and so don't praise me for my gaming skills, because now we got to... I missed another jump. I could have done that. Whatever. It is Chemical Plant Zone, but this, uh, this stage is so cool. They also did change up some of the older ones and stuff like that. But anyways, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. And make sure to leave your comments if you're having any other issues or if I've missed anything else. Oh my god, don't get smashed! And I got smashed. I have died at that part every single time not even on this game like in the original one as well it does seem like sonic's hitbox is slightly larger in this one though and so that is a lot easier to do in this one which is incredibly frustrating once again that'll be in my full review for all that type of stuff there are some hitbox issues i would like to comment on in that review but that'll be coming out in the next few days so yeah, once again, I'm enjoying this game. I'm going to be going ahead and trying to get some multiplayer going through me and my sisters and maybe some online stuff and stuff like that. The game does not support native online, which would be kind of nice if I had online features. Oh God, the sound is terrifying. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh my God, am I going to drown? Please don't drown. Please don't drown. Oh my God. 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 Oh my God.